I picked up a fender at the uh, junkyard. I'm going to be replacing the uh, passenger side front fender. Before I do that, I'm going to prep the uh, whole fender and uh, prime it and paint it. I'm going to put a rust inhibitor on the inside, um, and then I'm going to uh, uh, scuff up the surface gently just to break that uh, the clear coat on there and uh, see if I can get some adhesion with uh, a good primer. I already washed it uh, really well with the hose, let it dry out, and now I'm going to go over it with some really fine steel wool first and just clean it all up and see if there's any uh, imperfections that I need to address uh, before I start the process. It's sanding pretty easy with a uh, chemical cleaner and some steel wool. Just getting all of the surface oxidation off, any dirt, grime, and uh, it's feathering the edges really nice where there were little nicks. So I may not have to do a whole lot of sanding. I might just try the whole steel wool first, see what happens on the other side, and then uh, clean it really well before putting on a uh, primer coat. And on this project van, I'm using materials as much as I can use out of my shed that's free or something that I already had. I have about 40 hunks of steel wool and all kinds of cleaning chemicals. So I'm using that first, use those up. It's a project van, it's not gonna be perfect but it's a practice van, so eventually when I build a, uh, a tiny home out of a uh, larger van, then I'll have some uh, experience with what I'm gonna be dealing with as far as parts, damage, and then once I get to the interior, it will help, uh, it will help me learn how to use and attach to the metals inside and uh, do general repairs. That's my goal. But for now, just a little project van. I don't have a whole lot into it, and I'm gonna keep the budget extremely low. So the fender that I'm cleaning, uh, just the back side and all of the uh, connection points, uh, I was cleaning it up with uh, steel wool and some cleaner, and I did discover a little bit of uh, surface rust here. I'm gonna address that now while I have it off, and uh, I'm gonna grind it down with a, a wire wheel and then uh, put in a rust reformer and then uh, prime it and get a uh, coat of paint on it so that'll protect it for the long term. I'm going to go about uh, half inch to three quarters of an inch past the rust where it's pitting just so I could get a, uh, a good clean surface. It's not very deep at all, but it is, uh, it is starting to uh, get a little thick in some spots. So I'm going to make sure that I go all the way down on that to bare metal. And I probably should put gloves on and do something different because this is going to hurt. Here's the other side of the fender. Again, I'm just going over it lightly with steel wool and some cleaner, and then I'll clean it off really, really well, and then I will uh, prep the surface before I prime it. All I'm doing is getting any road grime off of it, any debris, also looking if I can feather out any of the uh, chips before I go to uh, any kind of sandpaper. I'm just gonna use my steel wool at the moment and make sure I get all of those uh, fine pieces of steel off so they don't become uh, <clears throat> part of the body and part of the paint. So I'm going to do a really good cleaning. This fender is in really good shape. I probably could just put it on as it is. It matches the uh, rest of the white of the original uh, paint color. But since I'm going through the trouble and I have it off, 
I'll be able to uh, prep it the correct way, or at least the best way that I know how. This part goes on the fender that I'm replacing. It's the uh, splash guard plastic underneath. Uh, all I'm going to do is take some wet sandpaper to it since it's uh, plastic. I'm just going to take off any uh, road paint that splashed up on it. And then I'm going to be uh, priming it and painting it uh, a darker color. I'm probably going to use the same hammered um, paint that I used on the bumper. I haven't decided that yet. I switched to 400 grit wet sandpaper to finish deglossing and to rough up the surface. That appears to be the right answer. I was using 600 at first and I've switched to uh, 400. I'm paying close attention to the grooves to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And I'm just going in steady, even circular motion, catching the edges, and then anywhere that it was chipping towards the edges, I'm just feathering that out as much as I can. The chips seem to have uh, feathered out a little bit, so I'm going to be happy with that. I'm going to uh, dry this all off when I'm done and then I'm gonna spray the uh, primer filler over it and then do another wet sanding to see how close I can uh, get to bringing those little chips up. Okay, so I uh, wet sanded uh, both sides of the fender. I've dried it off and then I uh, cleaned it completely with uh, mineral spirits, wiped that off, made sure that it was dry and that there were no uh, little hair fibers from the towels or from the paper towels. What I'm going to do now is, I know the sun is on it, I'm doing it just for the video at the moment. Um, I'm going to spray the rust reformer on the uh, underside, the back side that isn't visible. Just to protect that metal, there was some uh, metal that I had to grind off that was a little bit rusty. Uh, I'm happy with it, so I'm going to cover it now with the uh, rust reformer. And then once that sets and dries, then I'll flip it over and I'm going to prep the uh, finished surface again uh, and then start priming and finishing that off. So that's where we're at so far. I sprayed the fender using some primer filler. I'm not very pleased with the uh, outcome of that, so I'm going to go ahead and add some pinhole filler. Uh, while I have it here, there's only maybe uh, 10, 10 spots or so that need a little uh, assistance, so I'm gonna do that while I have the uh, fender in this stage right now. See what happens. Note to self, when you're using the pinhole filler, don't use too much, otherwise you're going to be sanding for a long time and then uh, going into the um, primer and bringing that back down to your original paint. So that hole filling primer, um, I'm guessing if I did more research on it, then it would say that it's not for those uh, dings that I was uh, trying to cover. Um, it doesn't look like it from the video here, but it is really smooth. Um, as I was wet sanding it all down, I ran my hand over it, closed my eyes to see what I could find in the blemishes that I found. I just added a little bit more uh, pinhole putty, and then by the time I was all done sanding the entire piece again, um, I didn't wait long enough. I think it probably should have dried, but I used mineral spirits to uh, clean the entire surface after I was sanding, and it was uh, dissolving some of the uh, primer in some areas. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to address that other than let it dry and then go over it with another full coat of uh, primer. I got a final coat of primer on uh, after I filled uh, all the pinholes, resanded it. It looks great. It's drying now and I'm really pleased with the results. The uh, pinhole filler was the correct answer for that. So we're going to let that dry. Um, I may let that dry for a day or so. I'm not going to rush it. I'd like that to really uh, cure, and I do want to do a little investigation on uh, what my problem was, is why that primer was uh, coming off so easily with the mineral, mineral spirits. Until then, 
I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, splash guard with the uh, hammered spray paint that I used on the bumper. Just going to give it a nice fresh look. That's all it is. finished all the priming and the hole filling that I'm going to do on this project. It's now time for paint. I built a uh, somewhat of just a debris shelter just to keep any debris from falling onto the paint. It's not too windy of a day so I'm not, uh, not too concerned but that's what I did anyway. That's one coat. It says you can recoat in about an hour, which I am going to do. And then you can also do a clear coat uh, within that time frame, and I'm going to do that as well. I can see some little tiny uh, pinholes already, and a little, a few little blemishes. I'm not going to be uh, concerned about that. Uh, I attempted to get those out, and I brought them up considerably. Uh, but again, just a little project van, so I'm not looking for perfection but uh, functionality and doing the best job I know how at the time. I put on two coats of paint and uh, now I'm starting to put on the uh, finish coat which is a semi-gloss clear um, and it's a good thing that I did put up this uh, covering save myself from dealing with leaves and sap dripping so I would have been really upset. But all I'm doing now is putting on some light coats of the uh, top coat and it says to put it on in light coats every few minutes so that's what I'm doing we'll see what it is however this comes out that's what it's gonna be I put several light coats of the semi gloss protectant over the top of it clear coat and it turned out really great. I'm happy with it. There are a few pieces of lint and a couple of bug prints. I'm not too concerned about it. It turned out great for what it was. And uh, the surface as it's drying is starting to uh, go from a, a matte looking finish more to a glossy finish. So I'm going to let it cure for 24 hours and then I'll install it.